Hi, I'm going to show you the basics of building your own modified version of Stevenson's rocket if you have any need to make any changes or feel you want to contribute to its development. So before I begin I want to make it absolutely clear that these tools make many assumptions that you'll be running on a Debian based Linux system. So that could be uh, Debian itself, it could be Ubuntu, it could be Linux Mint, it could be SteamOS itself. But you must be running a Debian based system. You can't be running Mac OS or Windows or a non-Debian Linux system because there are too many assumptions made in the scripts that we use to generate the image that you'll be running on Debian. So with that said, uh, here you have the web page for Stevenson's Rocket and the first thing you need to do is scroll to the top of the page and click the view on github link which will take you to the Stevenson's Rocket source code. Now the first thing we're going to do is on the right hand side is where it says HTTPS clone URL. This is the the address which you can pass to the git tool to download all the source code. So we're going to click the copy to clipboard button, open up a terminal and do git clone and then paste the address in here. This needs to download about a gig of data so I'm going to pause the video briefly while I let that finish. OK, the download is done and we're going to change into the directory that we just downloaded. And if we list the files in here you see there are four directories highlighted in blue here, four text files which are in white, and two script files which are in green. Now it's possible that there might not be this exact number of files if you've downloaded the, uh, the Stevenson Rocket source uh, at a different time to when I made this video. I might add or remove files over time, uh, but this is the rough structure. And each of these folders have different uses. The first thing we're going to do is explain this script here. Gen.sh is the, the master script which takes care of almost all of the tasks we need from start to finish. It will uh, download the, the upstream Valve SteamOS installer. Uh, it will uh, verify that you have all the tools you need in order to to build your modified image and it also takes care of merging together your changes to create your final modified image. So what we're going to do is run gen.sh. So you can see here the first thing it's alerting me to is that I have a package missing and how to fix it. So I'm going to do what it says. And now, when I rerun gen.sh, it'll detect that I have everything I need, but that I don't have my own copy of the Valve SteamOS installer. So it will now download it. So again, this will take a couple of minutes, so I'm going to pause the video to let it finish. OK. That image is downloaded, so when gen.sh runs, it extracts all of the contents, it merges in the changes that are already there, it rebuilds the list of CD contents because the installer won't know which packages are available unless there's an index of packages. So it's rebuilding that index. And then, once it's done with that, it'll finally build the um, the ISO file which you can put onto a, a DVD or use as an image file and put onto a USB stick. This step takes a little longer the first time you run it but it should be faster in subsequent runs.
There we go, it's generating the final image file. And we're done. So now we have our completed image. So that's all well and good, but what you want to do is make some changes. So there are two types of changes you're likely to want to make. You either want to add software, which isn't part of the default install, or you want to update software, which is obsolete in the current installer. So I'm going to cover both of those now. If you want to add a file, you need to obtain that software and all its dependencies in the form of .deb packages and insert them into this pool directory. So if we have a look at what's in pool currently, you can see there's this folder structure containing a lot of subdirectories, four deep for each package. So pool main for open source software, starting letter, and then the name of the source package. So you need to first drop your package into a folder, creating it if needed, and then edit this file default.preseed. This file uh, provides all of the settings that are handed to the, the installer and those settings include down here which packages to install. So if you want to include something you simply add the name of the package to the end of this list and then rerun gen.sh and it'll build your image. Now if you want to update some software there are two reasons you might want to do it. Either you have a bug fix you want to include or you want to make use of an updated uh, beta for SteamOS which hasn't yet had a corresponding installer created. Now there's a second script you can use, Archive Mirror, which will download a complete copy of all of the packages available in the SteamOS servers. This is an optional step because it takes about 8 gig of disk space. Once you have that downloaded, it's much easier to copy the files you want into the pool. And within gen.sh, right at the bottom, is this commented out line, obsolete report. If you uncomment that line, as long as you have an archive mirror copy, then gen.sh will report to you all of the packages which are newer in the archive mirror than on the CD, which will help you work out which files you want to update. Now you don't just want to drop the updated packages into pool, although this will work, it will waste a lot of disk space. You also need to remove the old versions from the build root, and the way you do that is you edit gen.sh and then you find this line debs to remove and this is a list of every single file, every single package that you want to have deleted because you intend to replace it with your own. So you see the first one on this list here is I'm deleting a firmware package provided by SteamOS because I provide my own firmware packages in pool. So if I quit the text editor uh, here's an example of an updated package. Let me see Valve Bug Reporter. So you can see here the Valve Bug Reporter 2.12 package is in the pool and here the 2.11 package is being deleted from the CD because Valve CD only has 2.11. Now this entire Debs to Remove section is unfortunately uh, very manual to update. However, 
uh, it's a lot safer to have a list of exact files to remove and to simply not do anything uh, if those files aren't recognized rather than to risk accidentally deleting things that are needed. In most cases simply dropping in the updated packages is enough. There are a few cases where the names of packages will change between versions and you need to simply learn to deal with these cases. So for example the IceWeasel web browser on the, uh, the SteamOS DVD is version 17. So you see here IceWeasel underscore 17 blah blah blah. But that package also pulls in a few others. This one here, libmos js17d, and this one here, zolrunner17.0. And the obsolete report script won't notice that these files can be removed because the new version of IceWeasel, version 24, pulls in differently named packages, zolrunner-24.0 and libmos.js24d. So you, you'll you learn over time when you can delete these packages whose names uh, change between versions rather than just their versions. Everything under after the underscore, sorry, is version. Everything before the underscore is name. Even if there's a number which looks like a version number before the underscore, that's actually part of the name. So it's probably most obvious with this Zolrunner one here. Zolrunner-17.0 is the name of the software. The version of it is 17.0. something, but that's a separate concern. This underscore here is the separator between the name and the version number. Uh, this is probably the only special case uh, of this one is the IceWeasel software, but it might come up again and I don't plan on updating the video to tell you about it, so you'll just have to learn to deal with these cases. Other than that, uh, you should be geared up to create your own installers as you see fit, and if you make any changes you think would be beneficial, then please do send them on to the, uh, the Stevenson's Rocket uh, issue tracker, and I'd be glad to take a look. Thank you.